Honestly, I cannot remember if I've actually done a video on Vimium, but it's also not the only Chrome extension to add Vim bindings into the browser, and it's also not the only good one. So for about the past week or so, I've been playing around with an extension known as Surfing Keys, and you know what? I'm actually really liking this. Usually when I try out these extensions, I don't stick to using them for that long, but I've actually kind of gotten really used to actually working with this. So the typical stuff you'd expect to see, whether that be in Vimium or even in something like Qt, is going to work here. So if we go and press F, that'll let us go and select something. So let's say we want to go and select the search bar up here. So let's press F and we'll search for uh, Hello World I, I guess Python, sure, that'll work. And from here, if we go and press F again, that'll actually let us go and click on a link. Let's go to, say, this one here. And that actually opens it up in a new tab. So from here, if we want to go and scroll up and down, we can press J and K. And if there was any horizontal scrolling, the H and the L keys would go and do that. And then pressing the slash key will let us go and do a search. So let's search for hello. And I've noticed that sometimes the first search you do, for whatever reason, just doesn't work. But that shouldn't be that difficult to fix, and after the first search, it always works perfectly. And if you ever get lost with what you're doing, if you press the question mark key, it will then bring up the help menu, and this shows you every single binding you can actually use. Obviously, I won't be going through everything, but this does give you a good indication of what you can actually do with this extension. There's also a GitHub IO attached to the source code for this, which does also provide some extra help as well, but I would say don't bother looking at it because it's really out of date. A lot of the key bindings don't actually work anymore, so just come to this and this should be everything you need. Now, what makes this stand out is how it handles editing. So if I go and press I, normally this would work like F where it would give you a bunch of things you could select and then depending on the letter you select, that's the text box you go to. Right now though, there's only one text box, so I will just automatically jump us to it. That, that in and of itself is useful, but not really that crazy. If we go and press capital I though, this will actually open up an embedded Vim editor. Now, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but unlike something like Fire and Vim, this isn't actually using real Vim or Neo Vim. What it's actually using is a browser embeddable text editor known as Ace. Ace is a really cool application and has a bunch of different modes, one of those modes being a Vim mode. This does ultimately mean it is going to be Vim emulation, so some things aren't going to work perfectly, but for just editing text like this, it's going to be perfectly fine. But this editor is used for something else as well, so let's say that we have this drop down here. If I go and press capital I, and then I press A to actually select that, it's going to open up all of the options inside of the editor. So I can go and say, select this one here, and it actually goes and switches over to that value. One of the issues with these Vim extensions is for some elements in the browser, it doesn't exactly translate properly because the modern web, face it, just isn't made to be used with your keyboard. But when you go and adapt it like this, it actually works out pretty well. One issue with the Ace editor you may have spotted there is... It's not actually using a mono font, so as we go further along the line, the cursor gets more and more out of sync. Now, I've tried to set a mono font inside of my web browser, and it's just completely ignoring it. But on the GitHub, it is using a font correctly, so there's clearly some way to actually change this. It just doesn't seem to be documented inside of the GitHub. So if your mono fonts are set up properly, it should work, but... I can't guarantee it. Now, all of that stuff is nice and cool, but what about a visual mode? So, let's say that you want to go and select some of the text. Normally, the way you would do that is grab your cursor and then go and select the thing you want to select, but that's kind of annoying to do, especially if a lot of the stuff you're doing is going to be with your keyboard. So, if we go and press V, this is going to let us jump to any section of the page. So let's say we press uh, DV. It actually jumps us to this word in here. It doesn't have to be a link. It can be any word on the page. And from here, we can actually just move around like you would be able to inside of Vim. So technically, we're not actually in visual mode now. If we go and press V though, that will actually go and enable that. You can't really see it because my background color, but that actually is selecting it. If I go and press Y now, that will then copy that. 
and let's go to my terminal for example and I can go and paste that over here. Honestly, that is a really convenient way to do a copy. You can also do things like press W to go to the next word, B to go to the previous word. Some of the other keys you may expect, like capital W and capital B may not work. Capital W actually opens up a new window, but having some of this here is still going to be really cool. Now you can actually go and combine this with a search. So let's go and select the HTML part here. We'll just copy that. And then if we go out of this back to the regular mode, and then if we press S, this will actually prompt us for another key to press to actually search what we selected inside of a search engine. So we can search things like Baidu, DuckDuckGo, Wikipedia, Google, GitHub, Stack Overflow, Bing, and YouTube. And this is just how it's set up by default. You can go and configure it to work with other things as well. So let's go and search that on, say, uh, Google, for example. And as we can see, that searches Google for HTML. Now, what if we're on a page like this and we want to go and modify the URL to go to some different page on the site? So if we go and press semicolon and then lowercase u, that actually lets us go and modify the URL. So let's go and say, set this to dog. And if we go and press enter, that actually opens that up in a new tab. Now, if you don't want to open it up in a new tab, you can do the same thing, but with capital U. So if we go and modify this now and go to cat or something, that will then reload the page and take us to that page. Another cool thing we can do though, is let's say we bring the URLs back open again, but actually include two lines in here. So what it's going to do now is it's actually going to go and open up both of these in new tabs. In my mind, all of that stuff is really, really useful. Now, another thing that's useful is let's say we want to go and set a tab mark. So a tab mark basically lets us go and jump back to a previous tab from any of our other tabs. So if we go and press M followed by another key, let's say we set it to C and let's go to a different tab. Let's go to say the cat tab. And then if I go and press apostrophe and then C, that will jump us directly back to that tab. Speaking of tabs, you may be wondering how I've actually been jumping around. So if I go and press GT, that will basically bring up the F selector, but for the tabs instead. And then whatever key we actually go and press, that's the tab we're going to be jumping to. So if we press D, that'll take us to HTML. If we press F, that'll take us back to start page, so on and so forth. But you don't have to jump through tabs like that. So if I go and press capital R, that'll take us to the tab to the right, and it will be cyclic, and capital E will take you to the tab to the left. Now, sometimes you don't want to go to a different tab. Sometimes you actually want to move the tabs. So if I go and press the greater than sign twice, that'll take this tab we're on one place to the right, and then the less than sign twice will take this tab one place to the left. We can also go and jump between the first and the last tab as well. So pressing G0 will go to the first tab and then G$ will go to the last tab. And as you may be able to guess, if you want to go and kill a tab, you can do so by pressing X. And one really important binding is ON for open a new tab. Now, when you're actually in a new tab like this, you'll notice that your bindings won't actually work. So inside of Brave and inside of Chromium, plugins don't exactly function properly on a new tab. So from this point, you will have to go to some other website. And there are some other tab functionalities we can do as well, doing things like, say, duplicating tabs with YT, but for the most part, you're not really going to be using those. One thing you will be using, though, is the Omnibar, which basically provides a way to enter some text to actually control your browser. So let's say we wanted to do something like search Google. So if we go and press O for open, I guess, and then G, that will let us do a Google search. If we press OD, that'll be for a DuckDuckGo search. All of these secondary keys are exactly the same as the ones we saw earlier. So let's go with uh, DuckDuckGo and we'll search for YouTube, for example. And that will go and do that search in a new tab. But it can also be used to open up a URL. So if we go and press T, that will show us URLs that I've entered recently. And let's say I start typing in Wanikani. And let's go to this one right here. And that will take us to the Wanikani website. If we go and press OX, that will let us see things that I've recently closed. If I press OH, that'll let us do the same thing, but this time for my history. As with what I mentioned earlier, if I go and press O, it will list out all of the things we can use alongside it. So if you're ever unsure, just wait a couple of seconds and you'll see these down here. 
Now, most web browsers have sort of session management in them. It's sort of like trying to recover the session you previously had open, but this plugin also provides session management as well. With Brave, it doesn't work consistently. So if I go and press capital Z, capital Z, it will close my browser. And if we go back into the browser, as we can see, it did return everything. That's not what's supposed to happen. That's Brave doing it by itself. Let's go and get rid of all of these. And if I press capital Z, capital R, it will return all of those tabs we had open before. Personally, I think that functionality is a bit inconsistent to actually rely on. Now, there is a Chromium and a Firefox version, so this part will differ a bit, but if we go and press GA inside of Chromium, it'll take us to my Chromium About section. If I press GB, it'll take us to my bookmarks. Apparently, I have bookmarks I didn't even realize. If I press GC, that'll take us to my cache. Brave doesn't actually have a cache, unlike Chromium, and Firefox, I presume, has similar bindings, but for the Firefox-related pages instead. Obviously, there are other pages you can get to as well, but because this is made for Chromium rather than Brave, the Brave extra pages won't actually be here. Honestly, there is so much more this extension can do, and that's without even getting into the configuration. So just have a look at the GitHub page, and you'll see all of the things that are actually possible here. Now, one thing that is really weird that's included is there is also a markdown previewer as well. I don't understand why exactly, but if you go and copy some markdown and then you press semicolon PM, it will show you it in a previewer. There's also some changes to PDF handling as well, so you can go and use all of your bindings inside the PDF viewer. That's fine, usually web browsers do this, but the markdown stuff's a little bit weird. As for doing any of the configuration, all of this is really, really well documented. Everything you could possibly want to do is in here. And if you actually want to go and write any of that configuration, it's actually done in JavaScript. So in Brave, if you go to the plugin icon and then you go to manage extensions and go to the extension options, it'll show you this big JavaScript file here that also has things like CSS as well to actually modify the theme of the plugin. And from here, you can actually go and add your own bindings in and do whatever you want to the extension. You may think that JavaScript is a bit of a weird choice. The reason why it's configured with JavaScript is because it's a browser extension and they're already written in JavaScript. So it just makes sense to continue with that trend. And if you are looking for an alternative to Vimium to see if something else fits your workflow a bit better, this might definitely be worth checking out. As always, there will be links to the plugin in the description down below. So if you want to give it your own shot, I highly recommend doing so. You can check that out down there. So I think that's going to be everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pity, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down in the description to my Patreon, subscribe star, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you want to watch it somewhere that isn't YouTube. So I think that's everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>